Hello and welcome to the Over and Back Classic NBA Podcast. I am Jason, and with me as usual is Rich. Hello, Rich. Hey, how's it going? Pretty good, man. Um, excited to uh, talk about our uh, next subject. Also excited that, uh, like the NBA, I have not had to deal with any major realignment in my life in quite a long time. So it's always, uh, <laughs> yeah, everything's been nice. pretty stable. This, this podcast has been pretty stable now for uh, quite a few years. And yeah, we don't uh, don't do a whole lot of moving around. We uh, stay yeah. in our same spots. We stay uh, pretty much living where we live. And uh, yeah, it's been pretty yeah, good. It's all good. So yes, so we are uh, the, the subject uh, is is realignment in the NBA and. Uh, how that has worked in the past, uh, times in which that has maybe had a major effect on, uh, you know, championships or finals appearances or things like that. So, um, you know, we're pretty used to the NBA landscape being what it is. It's been actually pretty stable yeah. since, you know, the, the last major realignment occurred before the 81 season. You know, other than expansion teams and a, you know, a few tweaks here and there, basically the same teams have been in the same conference uh, during that time. So we're, so we're really used to that happening. But there was definitely a period, and we've talked about it in other different ways before, um, of, you know, expansion and shifting and, you know, of course, the 76 merger and all that where, you know, things were not stable at all. Things changed, you know, dramatically. So it's I think it's worth looking into, um, you know, the effects that had and, and some interesting what ifs and all that good stuff. Right. Yeah. And we, we brought it up many times before, you know, scenarios that people bring up all the time or, you know, the, the 80s bucks and how maybe they, you know, if they were in a different conference, things would went a little different. Or, I mean, really, you can look at the entire, you know, West, like the last 15 years of the Western Conference and versus the Eastern Conference and stuff like that where a little stuff like that but we're going to look at, at, at not necessarily like there are some e- examples of like teams that hey they would have probably made the playoffs had it been but we're going to look at a little bit higher and ramifications of that like oh geez this team was really great but they had to meet up with x or whatever had they not done this or whatever so a little stuff like that but yeah i mean you mentioned it at the top um in terms of the stability that we've had, we've had a few little teams. We'll we'll talk about those here and there. You know, you've had your Hornets, a few little expansion teams kind of come in and move or whatever. But for the most part, save for, you know, four or five little tweaks here and there, it has not been major realignment. Whereas you go back in history, and of course we'll go through it, where you just see these just random ass things where the, the league's still trying to find itself, figure out where people should be, you know, line up the teams or whatever. And it was an every year, almost every other year occurrence for, for a while there. And now we've had, you know, stability, like you said, for the last, you know, 30 plus years. And uh, yeah, we kind of take it for granted now that it's just like you know you can sort of rely on this stuff here and there but you know, we'll talk about it in a bit it's it, it was not that way for forever for a really long time in the nba yeah that for sure so um we'll get started with the teams that have not ever moved which it makes it uh, easy for us we're going to kind of do this uh, team by team that it seems to uh, I think that'll make it work the most smoothly um, so always in the East, the uh, Boston Celtics since the uh, merger, the 1950 season, the New York Knicks also the uh, same season, and the uh, Syracuse Nationals who later became the Philadelphia 76ers. Mm-hmm. Uh, since 1950, they moved to Philly in 64, but they have always been in the East. The uh, Cleveland Cavaliers since the 71 season and the Toronto Raptors since the 96 season. So since they were inaugurated, they've always been in the East. Um, kind of makes sense geographically that those teams would all you know pretty much be um, – Eastern Conference teams, um, but although, hey, we'll we'll talk about some geographic uh, yeah. mishaps here in a little bit. That's so. not always well, not always geographic. Yeah, that yeah, was. <laughs> or yeah. Sometimes it was the wildly did not make sense, but um, but here they they've been pretty good. Uh, mm-hmm. Always in the West, uh, the Seattle SuperSonics slash Oklahoma City Thunders in '68. The Phoenix Suns since 69, the Portland Trail Blazers since 71, the Denver Nuggets since 77 when they joined the NBA from the ABA, uh, the Dallas Mavericks since 81, the Minnesota Timberwolves since 1990, and the Vancouver Memphis Grizzlies since 96, which that, that's a little bit of a questionable one, although they are, I believe they're west of every team that's in the Eastern Conference, so so they feel more like they should be an Eastern Conference team, but they have, um, t- technically, they do fit in the Western Conference, um, although, yeah, they, uh, they have some weird road trips, of course, uh, since moving from from Vancouver. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and Minnesota is similar as well. That's that's long been considered like a, a, a maybe a reason for their not, you know, obviously always being competitive or, you know, obviously had some competitive points here and there. And and but uh, yeah, them being in the West uh, has always made it a little tough too for Minnesota. But I mean, geographically, it does make uh, some sense. But yeah, it is kind of weird as well. You kind of I wouldn't assume Minnesota being the West, but it it does kind of fit a little bit. But that they've been along with Memphis um, always sort of alluded to as like, hey, that could possibly be a reason why these teams aren't, you know always successful or always, but yeah, I think there's probably a lot of other things like Glenn Taylor, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> that caused Minnesota to not be as good, but you know, yeah, we're going to talk about it later, but the, um, uh, you know, the, the, they can't really be anywhere else if the conference system is the way that it is, but maybe the conference system shouldn't be the way that it is, you know, is, is, is theoretically the thought, but we'll, we'll get into that toward sort of toward the end where it's more their division. That's the issue as opposed to the conference. Sure. But, right. Exactly. Yeah. 
Um, so now getting into the teams that have realigned, um, the, uh, the Los Angeles Lakers, they, uh, you, of course started in Minneapolis and you would think that they would basically have been West, um, all the time, but actually they're in the first year of the NBA. Uh, there was of course the merger between the NBL and the BAA and it was a 17 team league. So there were three divisions, the Eastern, the Central and the Western, and they were in the Central division in their first year. Um, in that merger, it took 10 teams directly from the BAA, including three teams that had previously played in the NBL and then joined the BAA before the merger, and that was a 12-team league. So two of those teams uh, either went away or went to a different league, and 10 of them went into the NBA. Six of them went directly from the NBL, which was a 10-team league, so four of those teams either went away or went to a different league. There was an attempt at another league, which is beyond the purview of the show, but um, – but that did happen. And then there was one expansion team, the Indianapolis Olympians, who were actually player owned. So that year, there was a really, really complicated, unbalanced schedule where not all the teams even played the same um, number of games. <laughs> right. and, and there was a weird playoff system that I'm not even going to bother explaining because I don't really. We, we talked about it on the show not that long ago, a few months ago. I forgot exactly what the, the topic of the show was, but uh, we, we definitely did talk about how, like, yeah, some teams you know played 13 games or yeah. 14 games, and this team played at the level. Like, it was just a very, very odd thing. And the playoff system made absolutely no sense. So I, I yeah. forgot what it was exactly, but we talked about it a few months ago. If you want to sure. care to go, if, if you want to just browse through all of our episodes, it's, it's, it's <laughs> it, it'll be obvious. One. I don't, yeah. it's off my head right now. I don't know, but it'll be right. obvious when you browse through our shows. Ah, that's the episode where they talk about the 1950, uh, you know, playoff series or whatever. I got, I, I think it was about playoff restructuring. Um, so it was probably oh, during yeah. last year's playoffs. So it was something, somewhere around there, but yeah, you'll see 90, it was a complete disaster and, and playoff structuring similar to, to realignment was the thing where like every year they were tweaking and changing and, and doing this and doing this and doing this. And then now we've sort of come to, to, to expect other than you know short little changes in terms of seven games versus five games for the most part it's all pretty pretty stable and then you obviously have you know home road games and, and those sort of switching off but there was a while there similar to realignment and expansion and whatnot where it just makes no sense like every year it's like now it's round robin now it's not round robin now this team plays this team that, that, that guy's got to buy and like buys and round robins and all that sort of stuff but this yeah. year in particular is just completely maddening the three divisions a bunch of new teams coming in teams coming and going and and stuff but yeah the 1950 was just a complete disaster in terms of playoffs but hey yeah. Trying to get their lead together. Hey, 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 right. Little uh, there you go. Growing pains. It's yeah, fine. Yeah. Yes. And, um, but after that season, they have been in the Western Division or Conference since 51. In fact, the league, as you know, that, that year with the playoffs, probably not helpful to get to the league that went from 17 teams down to 11 teams in 51, <laughs> two divisions. Eventually, they were eight teams by 55. Um, but the, Lake, or the Lakers have remained in the Western Conference outside of – they moved to L.A., but obviously L.A. is about as far west as you can get. So they have stayed in that conference uh, since uh, uh, since 51. So – uh, so yeah, they have, uh, they, they, they basically, uh, stayed, uh, you know, they're technically were in a different, uh, division, but, uh, you know, almost their entire history have been in the West. Right. Yeah. Which, which makes sense, obviously. Yeah. But geographically and, and sort of, it, it seems, it just seems right that the Lakers are, are West. But now, I mean, now that they're in LA, there's almost no, I mean, it'd be, it'd be absolutely ludicrous if they were in the Eastern Conference, but. Right. Uh, absolutely. Yes. So, um, uh, the Pistons, it gets a little more complicated. So, yes. <laughs> Strap in. <laughs> like the Lakers, they started out in the uh, Central Division in their first year in XFT. And at this point, they were in Fort Wayne, not uh, Detroit. And then they um, they moved to the Western Division the next season and um, remained in Fort Wayne through 57. And then uh, moved to Detroit the next year and remained in the Western Division in 1967. And then they went to the Eastern Division for three seasons from 68 to 70, and they moved there when the um, Seattle Supersonics and then the, the, then the then San Diego Rockets joined the league. But they were under 500 those uh, years, so there was no real effect on uh, playoff matchups or um, anything like that. And then right. and then we go on to the Western Conference uh the period between uh, 71 and 78 and there was a little bit of effect uh on how things worked out in, in terms of a uh, playoff structure and some kind of some weirdness during that time yeah so uh, a little bit of background just to give you an idea how they they sort of got here the bulls uh chicago bulls joined the nba in 1967 uh rock and sonics in 1968 and then the suns and bucks joined in 1969 uh then braves Cavs, and blazers in 71 so you have a bunch of different teams coming in these next few years uh so nba went to two conferences four divisions uh this put uh, the Pistons in the Western Conference, back in the Western Conference, they were in the Midwest Division with Milwaukee, Chicago, and of course, 
Midwest zone, Phoenix. <laughs> because, you know, if what I think Midwest, I think Milwaukee, Chicago, and then Phoenix, Arizona, of course. Um, as far as what it affected, though, the Pistons, they weren't an elite team, uh, really by any stretch, but they did win 45 games, uh, in 1971. The Hawks, uh, they were the Eastern Conference's fourth seed, and they only had 36 wins. So you look at that and you go, hey, 45 games in 71, that's a pretty good chance we'd be, you know, in the playoff mix or at least in the, in, you know, contenders, uh, in the different conference. Uh, they were also four games better than the West number four seed, which was San Francisco at that time, the San Francisco Warriors. Um, then the inverse happened in uh, 1976, actually, while they were still in the West for the Pistons. Uh, the Pistons, uh, at 36 wins, got the West number f- uh, five seed, uh, and that would have been the fourth worst record in the East that season. So it was kind of inverse. It was sort of back and forth. And, th- and that sort of speaks to the 70s NBA, where it was really hard to kind of <laughs> gauge what was the, the hell was going to happen on any given year or whatever. Uh, but that year, which is pretty funny, in 1976, the West number two seed, Milwaukee. Was thirty eight and forty four, so it's really interesting there. Where uh, Milwaukee, you know, uh, it's not a great team by any stretch, but uh, yeah, they were the second seed uh, as well. So yeah, that that's kind of just an in- interesting run there in in the West. But uh, didn't I don't know if it necessarily there was that you know obviously the one year where they, they weren't an elite team, they weren't a team that was going to contend for for a title, but a pretty solid team and probably could have made a few longer playoff runs had they been in the east but then there was also the inverse where they got in sometimes uh when, when you know the east was was no good and 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 stuff so it, it, it kind of worked out both ways so i don't know if it necessarily affected like the there was going to be a pistons championship that just didn't happen in the 70s but there's a chance that they would have had a little bit more uh playoff success had they been in the east but we did see a few years where, where, where it didn't quite hold up that way mm-hmm. yeah and um yeah so at the point where conference play begins, they divide into the Atlantic Division, the Central Division, the Midwest Division, the Pacific Division. Uh, the Atlantic and the Pacific Division always basically made geographic sense, but there are different times where the Midwest Division, and especially the Central Division, as we're going to uh, break through, there's just some like, okay, we don't have any room for these teams, so here's this random you know, assortment of teams <laughs> right, that yeah. will uh, get, get, get stuck there. So uh, it's kind of funny how that worked out. But in... Um, and in fact, when the Pistons finally moved to the Eastern Conference, and they moved in 79, uh, they moved to the Eastern Conference when the Braves became the San Diego Clippers and moved to the Western Conference. So they were in the Central Division, which also had the Spurs, the New Orleans Jazz, the Houston Rockets, the Hawks, and the Cavaliers. So, um, you know, they fit in pretty well with the Cavaliers. The rest of those teams, uh, not really that close to Detroit. <laughs> no, so, no, not yeah. at all. Right. So... Uh, next is the um, are, are the Warriors, and uh, they of course began in Philadelphia. Uh, they were in the Eastern Division from fifty to nineteen sixty two, and then moved to the Western Division in nineteen sixty three. Um, of course, initially they were the San Francisco Warriors. The Royals actually moved into the Eastern Division in their place, which we'll get into because that, that actually had some effect on division realignment. And in fact, the Warriors probably would not have made the finals in 1964 if not for the uh, move. Right. So, yeah. yeah. And um, then they uh, they moved to Oakland in 1972, became the Golden State Warriors. But, of course, they stayed in the same conference. Uh, there was, in fact, apparently a plan for them to be a regional franchise splitting time with San Diego. But that never really came to uh, fruition. They did play six games in San Diego that year, including, including two against the Houston Rockets, who had just moved away from San Diego. So uh, <laughs> the atmosphere there would have been a little bit interesting, I suppose. Um, but, uh, yeah, I... I I can't imagine what the, or I, mean, I can imagine probably the reaction to the team that just moved away from your city probably was not, uh, would not be that favorable. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I wonder if, if there would be like fans that were like, no, that's my team, or yeah, there'd be they're the yeah. absolute, like, I really love Delta Hayes, you know, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, really, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. That, yeah. I, I do miss the days, like the 30 years of the NBA really wanted San Diego to happen. And then, like, <laughs> they I, 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 really I like, they really tried. They really yeah. were like, all right, well, ABA how about too. the Braves? Yeah. Like, well, right. okay, all right, for the Clippers. Like, yeah, right. Like, all right, well, well, how about Bill Walton? Like, they just yeah. tried forever to get it to yeah. work, and and I, no. I miss that days. I miss it a little bit. Like I wish the the Sacramento Kings every year would be you know rumored to go to San Diego. There, there was a time where I think they were were for for like in the early two thousands. I remember that being popped up a few times here and there. But yeah, you don't hear about San Diego anymore on the uh, the cusp of NBA expansion. So not really. Well, they lost their football team, so maybe they'll maybe there's room for basketball. That's again, true. Yeah, they could play yeah. in the old stadium. So it'd be yeah, really cold. Or, no, it wouldn't, yeah. be, that wouldn't be that cold. It'd be all right. Right, San Diego's nice. So yeah, you could you could probably make that work. Yeah, you have to wear a jacket or whatever, but you know, like yeah. a little hoodie, but. That's not bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, so next we have the Hawks, who were in the Western Division until 1970. They moved around a lot. They were the Tri Cities Blackhawks uh, through 51, and then the Milwaukee Hawks through 55, and then the St. Louis Hawks, most famously, through 68. Um, 
And in fact, you know, their their first time they made the finals and they made four finals in like five years was basically uh, because of their conference. They won only 34 games in 1957 and would not have made the playoffs in the East. So they were lucky to uh, make it in the West and, of course, reach the finals and take the Celtics to seven games that year. Um, And then once they moved to Atlanta, um, uh, they – for whatever reason, um, they stayed in the West for two seasons, even though, of course, they were in Atlanta. Um, and the East had Milwaukee those two years, so it would have actually made, made a lot of sense for those to uh, swap out. Um, but my guess is that they probably wanted to, you know, Phoenix and Milwaukee were both expansion teams. They wanted an expansion team in each division for for balance i can't really think of any other logical reason yeah for that to and that makes sense yeah because obviously you're gonna you're always gonna beat up well i mean <laughs> in this case yeah for it only lasts about a year so that you could beat up yeah. on on milwaukee but uh yeah, yeah, yeah the, yeah, the, the bucks are obviously a rare yeah, case where obviously once <laughs> right, they yeah. cream that, that changes their entire fortunes <laughs> yeah so but, but uh, yeah n- normally yeah. with an expansion team you get that few years where you just beat up on them for for, for a while so yeah it makes sense that you wouldn't want to because then that would really fatten up that one uh, conference with two expansion teams, so that, that makes all the sense in the world that you would have uh, split those expansion teams by by league. So, so I, th- that does make all the sense. So, I, I'd assume that is without it ever. I don't know if we could explicitly find that being the reason, but that seems to stand the test of time that that would be. Yeah, uh, the reason it, it was definitely the reason in other expansion situations that was right. what, that was you know spoken. So, I I'm assuming that was probably the reason for this one, especially mm-hmm. with a fewer number of teams. You know, at that point, that that would have made a bit. You know, a 30 team league that's not going to make as big of a difference in a you know a 16 18 team league that that is going to make a bigger difference but. oh absolutely yeah so um yes and the hawks actually made the western division finals both those seasons with 48 wins they uh, lost to the lakers four games to one end and four games to zero in the, those seasons um their playoff teams were Playoff chances were probably not much better in the East. The, the Bullets, Sixers, and Knicks and Celtics were all, you know, pretty good during that time. It had similar records or better records. However, if they had played in the East, there is a chance they could have knocked the Celtics out of the playoffs in 69. Both of them actually had identical records. So the Celtics would not have, you know, won the championship, of course, in 69 if they had not made the playoffs in Bill Russell's last year. So that's a really interesting thing to think about. Um and um, they actually did finish first in the West, but they would have been fourth in the East with an identical record. Of course, you know we're not taking into account that, that the schedules would have changed if oh, they had been yeah, in a yeah. different conference. But but yeah, but basically, you know, the, the idea is they would be, have been similar quality either way. So uh, so so not necessarily changing the championship or a finals there, but an interesting um, thought nonetheless. Yeah, and then they uh, they go to Eastern Conference uh, 1971 uh, till the present, and uh, it's actually one, pretty interesting. The first year in the East, uh, very beneficial, as they were the conference's fourth seed uh, despite a 36 and 46 record, and that would have been the West's second worst record. So they go from the fourth seed uh, in the Eastern Conference to what would have you know what would have been the second worst team in the entire other conference. So uh, pretty interesting there. But then it's been pretty stable since then. Uh, they've just kind of you know been the Hawks and you know <laughs> Hawks history, which I'm ju- sure Jason will tell you all about here. So yeah, it's it's not always been good so or <laughs> some of it's been good never really been great unfortunately. right and i don't think the yeah. conference is to blame for uh many of the the, the issues over, for, yeah, over the years for the so. most part yeah yeah not really gonna throw the conference in there but um yes um so next we have the royals and kings franchise uh they began in the nba in the central division when they were in uh, rochester and um then when the central division went away they went to the western division which is uh, <laughs> weird but um Philly, New York, Boston, and Syracuse were all east of Rochester, so actually it, it was logical geographically, although they were, you know, kind of on an island. You know, there was Minneapolis, there was St. Louis, well, M- Milwaukee and St. Louis, so they were pretty far away from the other uh, Western uh, Conference or Western Division teams during that time, but uh, whatever, it, it did technically uh, fit. So they were there through 57, then they moved to Cincinnati and stayed in the Western Division through 62. Um, and this you know, geographically makes more sense. The East was Boston, Syracuse, Philadelphia, and New York. The West was Cincy, Detroit, um, St. Louis, and Minneapolis, Los which, Angeles. Which so. isn't bad. Yeah, that's a pretty, I mean, unfortunately, I mean, it seems weird to call that the West, but, you know, in 1962, yeah. you know, professional sports, that's, right. you know, yeah. Cincinnati is pretty far West. Like, yeah. it's, right. St. Yeah. Louis yeah. is very West. Like, that. it's just, it's, it's weird in that sense. Uh, that's obviously when plane travel is really beginning to take off. Uh, pardon the pun. Um, <laughs> God, <laughs> sorry. We're recording this in the morning. It's unusual for us. So I, I, I guess uh, the puns game there. come out. Yeah, the puns yeah, come out. I, I guess. Yeah, a little, little I, coffee gets the puns going. So. Yeah. Ooh. Um, 
So, yeah, so they moved to the uh, Eastern Division in 63 um, and remained there through uh, 72 when the Warriors moved to San Francisco earlier. And, yeah, that that really might have changed things for them in terms of uh, being able to make a, a finals appearance. Uh, they, they really had a shot in 64 and 65 to uh, do that. Yeah, so uh, 1964, if they had stayed in the West, uh, they had a 55 and 25 record with a uh, 4.43 SRS, uh, and the Warriors were 48 and 32 with a 4.41 SRS. Uh, so they had a five and four record versus the Warriors that season as well. So a pretty decent chance that that it's you know that Cincinnati could make a run there. Uh, also in 1965, they had a better SRS than the uh, the finalists who were the the Lakers. Um, they were 2.04 to the Lakers, uh, 1.70. They also had a six and four record against the Lakers that year as well. Uh, we'll get to that more in a minute uh, because. It, it does relate to the next team story a little bit more, but yeah, that's pretty interesting there. If Cincinnati had had made a little bit more of a run um, in those two years, you do wonder, you know, the the franchise trajectory, and, and that that comes up a lot. I mean, when, when we, you know, obviously there's a lot of realignment, a lot of moving, a lot of you know moving parts, and we talk about a lot of these teams, and, and we talk about maybe you know had they made a finals, is it possible that you know Cincinnati, you know, the, they remain in Cincinnati because you can't move a team that had just won a finals or made a final. So it, yeah. it's always interesting to look at it from that sense, where you know we we sort of take for granted how big of a deal a championship could have been for, for a lot of these franchises and could have really changed, you know, their fortunes in one way or another. That's not saying for sure that if you win a title, you're never going to move. But, you know, you know, it's always this weird story that like, hey, if these guys, if they make back to back finals or whatever, it might be harder to move the team from Cincinnati. And maybe the entire idea of, you know, the, there's currently a team in Cincinnati because that. So it, it's just a weird exercise to kind of look at it that way. But I, that is important, though. I mean, that success and team success and and, and becoming an institution in your town is, is a huge deal. And, and it becomes much harder to sort of move these teams and just kind of realign these things if that team becomes you know a part of that city's you know uh character in some sense so i'm not saying that cincinnati would have completely changed but you know you look at two years there where that that could have been a pretty big deal yeah and it changes the way yeah even if it doesn't have any effect on them eventually moving it does change the way we feel about you know oscar robertson right oh yeah yeah. jerry lucas jack climate those guys i mean that was a really good team that's kind of forgotten you know with the celtics being so dominant during that time um and them not you know if they had made a finals, we think maybe more about the Royals. Even if they don't win, we think more about the Royals Celtics rivalry in the same way we kind of think about you know right. the uh, Wilton Russell and the Lakers versus Russell. You know, it, it starts to kind of elevate itself to be more on those terms rather than just kind of being like a secondary rivalry that, that they had during that time. Yeah, and the Oscar thing is a good good mention as well because yeah, he you know obviously he gets his title later on in his career, but it's it's in the twilight of his career. He's obviously slowing down a little bit, and he still gets a lot of credit for it. But this is like prime Robert. So that would have been a really cool deal too for him to be, you know, in the mix there. Cause yeah, we don't, I don't, I don't know that most people think of him as like people respect, you know, the triple double and, and what he was able to do on the court. But I don't know if people respect him to the same level as a winner. You know what I mean? Like of the sixties, because you had such, you know, juggernauts there. And he's kind of a guy that sort of gets lost to time in that sense where, where we don't think of him as like a perennial winner or a contender or, you know, uh, the guy that's going to lead a team to a championship or whatever guy, you know, we think of him as the guy who, you know, came and, and got the bucks over that hump, but not necessarily the guy on, on a team or whatever. Yeah. So that would have been pretty right. interesting, too, if he um, had made a few different finals appearances there with Cincinnati. Yeah. So uh, they once they moved to uh, Kansas City and Omaha, uh, they shared those cities for a few seasons. Um, they go to the Western Conference. They moved to the Midwest Division, replacing the Suns, who went to the Pacific. So the Suns get to get out of the Midwest Division. Yay for them. Uh, the Rockets at that point moved to the Eastern Conference because they just moved to um, from San Diego to Houston. Uh, they... The Kings stayed in uh, Casey Omaha through 75 and then just in Kansas City through 85. And then, of course, um, uh, the uh, they moved to San- Sacramento at that point. And then they moved to the um, Pacific Division, I think, in 89 once the late 80s uh, expansion began. began. So uh, they were in the Midwest Division for a while in Sacramento, which which was a little off. But but I, I don't think was uh, – given the teams that were there, I don't think was like completely ridiculous. But we, we can uh, – uh, we'll, we'll look at that in a little bit. Um, but yeah, the uh, the next franchise, as we said, connected to this a little bit is the uh, the – the Bullets Wizards franchise, of course, began their life as the uh, Chicago Packers and uh, Zephyrs. Uh, I'm sure you hear a lot about the a lot of good Chicago oh, yes, Packers stories. Yes. You, know, you can't, you can't the walk down the streets of Chicago without people mentioning the old Zephyrs. But uh, yeah, yeah it's, well, uh, <laughs> a lot of Walt Bellamy tales. You know, a lot of uh, Terry Dishinger. I wish talk. that'd be great. Yeah, I wish right. more people would talk about that. That'd be awesome. But no, you never right. hear a thing about that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that no. Which is weird that the Bulls. I, I know that they shouldn't because it's 
not necessarily their franchise, but it, it'd be interesting to see if the Bulls sort of embrace that a little bit more because you hear nothing about that. You hear nothing about it. It's basically the Bulls came and, and that was it. That's when basketball was born in Chicago. And it's like, well, no, right. <laughs> like, yeah. they had the year teams like many teams before that, especially this team, which is a pretty, you know, relatively famous team that, that had a pretty good lineage. But yeah, you hear absolutely nothing about it. And, and of course, the Bullets aren't going to, I mean, they'll, they'll mention Ball Bellamy and stuff, but the Chicago end of that franchise is just never even spoken of. So it's, it's really interesting because, yeah, it's, it's, Especially, you, you heard nothing about these teams in Chicago. It's just like the Bulls came in '67, and that was it, or whatever. Sixty, whatever, and then you heard nothing about these early '60s teams. So it's a, it's interesting in that sense. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so, so they uh, not successful in Chicago, as we mentioned. They moved to the uh, Western Division, uh, and uh, or I'm sorry, well, they moved to Baltimore, but they remained in the Western Division mm. from '64 uh, to '66. Uh, uh, so, despite very much being on the East Coast, they uh, <laughs> stayed out west. And they, they could have very easily um, – there were nine teams in the league during that point. There were five in one division and four in the other division. They could have – it seems like it would have made a lot of sense for them just to move to the West or to swap out with the Royals. But uh, it is somewhat of a mystery why they uh, did that um, or why the Royals didn't just you know, move out West. Um because these had the Sixers, the Celtics, the Knicks, and the Royals at uh, that point. And uh, I, yeah, I thought, you know, at, at the point, maybe the Royals' ownership might prefer to stay in the East to save on travel since you played teams in your division 12 times and teams in the other division about eight or nine times at that point. So I actually messaged Jerry Schultz, who wrote a um, Cincinnati Royals history book, and he said that the, the Royals' ownership did not actually oppose a return to the East, but the other East Royals owners wanted to keep the Royals in the East, maybe par- partly, you know, Oscar Robertson might have been somewhat of a draw at that point. Or he also said that the league valued stability at that time, which is funny given the instability that expansion verse brought very soon after a team shuffling, you know, crazily just a few years later. But at that point, I guess they cared. And yeah, you, like I said, you, you could have flipped them uh, without too much trouble. You you had four teams in the East, five in the West. You could have had five in the East, four in the West. You obviously, that may have created some headaches that we can't really think about in terms of scheduling. That maybe that, that wasn't that practical, but um but probably the the most logical reason it actually happened is um, the relocation from Chicago to Baltimore happened really quickly, and apparently neither the old or the new owners of the team sought permission from the <laughs> board of governors for the move, and they actually ended up being fined twenty five thousand dollars, although that was later reduced to five thousand dollars. So maybe they were just mad at them for moving, and they just punished them by keeping them in the West for a while until um, finally the the Bulls came as an expansion team, and they could go to East to balance the uh, ten team league, which is eventually what happened in sixty seven when they moved to the Eastern Division and uh, and have been there since. Yeah, so it's a lot of a lot of interesting things. There. I like I like the idea that that Oscar was a draw and maybe those other Eastern Conference teams maybe you know didn't necessarily want to get away from it. So that makes sense in one sense, but I think yeah, the most obvious thing is probably that they just you know in the middle of the night moved and, and the rest of the teams are like ah no we're not gonna like accommodate you guys whenever you want. So I can see it being that or a little bit of of both factors possibly, but uh, yeah, it all it all stabilizes here in a little bit uh, um, with them going to the East in, in '67. But uh, yeah, it's uh, really interesting there. The the overnight move without telling anybody is pretty good. So, yes. Could you just imagine like the Sacramento Kings like, yeah, we're going to go to Seattle. I'm sorry. Like, right. Just, yeah. they just like yeah. get up and go. See like, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> like, sorry. Right. Bye. Like, what? Yeah. You just built the stadium. Well, yeah, yeah. Whatever. I mean, the Clippers basically did that when they went to L.A. from San Diego. Well, I guess True. they had talked about it forever. They just actually like, uh, you know, when they finally did it, they just they did it like basically without permission. And they were like, yeah, you know, sue us. And they did. But eventually the uh, Don Sterling won. So, uh, yeah, but <laughs> are you saying Don uh, Sterling might not be a great businessman? I, hold on. Yeah, it's <laughs> possibly it's possible. He's untrustworthy. So, or in maybe. Some way, you know, maybe, maybe shady, slightly. I, I uh, I know. You know, the, it's a lot of history. A lot of, yeah. a lot of shade being thrown at Donald Sterling right here. I don't know. It's, history will have to judge, I guess. But. Um, anyway, uh, next to, uh, next we have the Chicago Bulls who began life in the Western division conference from, uh, 67 to uh, 1980, uh, and then, uh, and then joined the Eastern conference in uh, 1981 when that was when the Mavericks were added to the NBA. We t- kind of talked about it before. That was the major realignment that more or less has remained stable. Um, mm-hmm. since the, the Bulls and e- and Bucks went to the East at that point and the Spurs and Rockets went to the uh, West, which you kind of, the finally cementing the East and West that we, uh, that we have come to know today. Yeah, and, and geographically makes 
a lot of sense. We'll talk again a little bit here about divisions and whatnot. But yeah, geographically, finally, it seems to make a little bit more sense. And, and, it, and it helps when you get Dallas in there and that they can obviously move west. And, and the Spurs make a lot of sense in the west as well. So it, it, it makes sense to us now because we've seen it for so long. But I think, you know, largely it, it does make the most sense uh, of any sort of alignment that we've seen in, in, in a long time or a lot of alignment that we saw throughout the 60s and the 70s. This 81 move that we've sort of stabilized with since it d- does, does, I think, make the most logical sense that we've, you know, at least for, for, for quite a few years that we've seen before, you know, um, because the 60s and yeah. 70s is just an absolute mess of, of yeah, like, it, teams it, moving. Right. And like, yeah, we're, we're, we're now, it, it, it seems like they finally kind of hit on something they can kind of stick with for, for a while. And obviously they have. Mm-hmm. So next we have the uh, Rockets, and uh, they began life, as we mentioned, in San Diego in the uh, Western Division from 68 to 71. Then they moved to Houston and remained in the Western Conference for one season, the 72 season. They, uh, again, a a team that moved uh, very promptly. There there was relatively little uh, advance notice for the move. In fact, that that was uh, the summer after they had hosted the All-Star Game. uh, (laughs) That sucks. uh, And and there was no real home arena for them in Houston, so they had to play. I mean, they played most of the games in Houston – um, but they had to play in various Texas venues. And a lot of the reason for the move is because they had Elvin Hayes. And Elvin Hayes had, uh, of course, you know, played in college in uh, Houston and been one of the big college stars of all time. So they thought they would be able to draw there. And, uh, yeah, that was kind of a mixed uh, bag. And they ended up trading Elvin Hayes not that long afterward to uh, Washington. But they, of course, have made, you know, they, they, they have found life in Houston and had some some great success there in the uh, intervening years. But, yeah, after one season, they moved to the Eastern Conference in 73. Um, they as mentioned before, they swapped conferences with the Kings, who had just moved to Kansas City. The, the Suns going to the Pacific Division, very, very important, of course. Um, so in the East, uh, it, yeah, it was a little weird because they were in the Eastern Conference despite being west of Milwaukee, Chicago, Detroit, and Kansas City. And they were stuck in sort of a weird misfit division, the Central Division with uh, Baltimore, Atlanta, and uh, Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad. None of those teams are really that close to each yeah, other. Yeah, so that's some um, shitty travel. Course, well, yeah, <laughs> that sucks for Baltimore. Yeah. Right, Baltimore eventually went to Washington, which was not that you know not that geographically <laughs> right, right, yeah. different. Maybe a better airport. I don't know, but um, <laughs> and, yeah, it, there's not really a great solution to that point. If if you had swapped Houston and Detroit, you would have at least put all the teams in the same time zones. But you, yeah, you, um, uh, you, know, it was just one of those things where. Um, yeah, there wasn't really – they were stuck on this divisional concept, which, you know, I don't know how really important the divisions were in the 70s as compared to today. I mean, as we did talk about, like, for a while, um, you know, you they took two teams from each division, so it was really important to, you know, which division you were in if you were – even if you had a worse record than somebody in the other division, as long as you were second in your division, you'd make the playoffs. So that was a big deal, but they kind of lessened that as the 70s went along and divisions, I, I, you know, seem to become less and less important. And obviously they are basically not important at all today. They're, they're really – there isn't – and there isn't really any – difference in schedule when it comes to divisions either because you play you know basically every team in the other conference twice and you play almost every team in your conference four times i think there's a, a, a couple teams you play just three times but it, it doesn't really it, 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 it the difference that it makes is extremely extremely minor at this point and it, it a little bit at, at that point because at that point you played teams in your division seven or eight times you played teams in the other division in your conference six times and teams in the other conference four times so there there was some you know difference in terms yeah, of travel yeah, yeah. and and such then as opposed to what it is now yeah and now it's been even negated even more with the seating differences now and like you're saying it, it essentially they don't exist i mean they exist very very t- like they're they're there to for for a little bit of you know quote unquote rivalry or whatever, you know, like you play a few games more, but yeah, for the most part with the seating and, and the way it's been and, and the way the schedule plays out, I mean, they've never met less than they do right now, uh, the divisions. So, yeah. So yeah, they moved to the Western conference in 81 as part of that big, uh, realignment and some interesting, uh, some interesting things going on, uh, there with, uh, uh their last season in the East and their first season in the uh, West. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, uh, last, last year in the East. So, um, 1980 there they uh they're 41 and 41 so obviously not a great record but that gets them all the way to the conference semifinals in, in the east which is pretty cool uh the first year in the west then so 1981 they're 40 and 42 uh but it works out for 
the uh, the Houston because they make a miracle run of the NBA Finals as the sixth seed, and they definitely benefited uh, from not having to face uh, the Celtics, who had won sixty two games that year, uh, the seventy sixers, who had won sixty two, the Bucks, who had won sixty uh, in the East. So that's pretty good. And 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 is their opponent KC also um, benefited a lot uh, from that as well. But yeah, no, it's, it's pretty interesting there. You know, forty and forty two make it all the way to the NBA Finals. But again, it took a miracle run as the sixth seed to do it. But you know, obviously getting to the NBA Finals without having to face the Celtics, the seventy sixers, and the Bucks, who were who were juggernauts in the East was definitely a big benefit for Houston, but it's, uh, it's interesting there. Those, those two runs there, I mean, 41 and 41 and 40 and 42, and they make, you know, semifinals and, and the NBA finals uh, in a few years there. So, uh, but it speaks a little bit to, you know, a little bit of the instability of, of that era as well, where, where there was still that opportunity to sort of make those miracle runs where, where now it's, it becomes much, much more difficult uh, to do that. But hey, pretty, uh, pretty good credit for those, uh, those teams there. Yeah. Yeah. We, we talked about, you know, some of those playoff upsets of all time and how there was a real big concentration of that between the, you know, early 70s to the early 80s, where yeah. there was just a, a whole mess of those. And you said Moses Malone and Moses Malone was uh, hard to stop in the playoffs. So <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, that's, 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 uh, that was helpful. Yeah. It's just, it's just hard yeah. to fathom like a 40 like a team two games below 500 making the NBA finals. Like it's it just, you know, it blows it because we're, we're so used to now. It's like it's so obvious when the when and, and, and for some people, it's a detriment like, oh, you know, who's going to make the finals before the playoffs even start? And like, yeah, of course, you know, that's sort of the, the, the narrative that goes around. And yeah, there's a little times here and there where where a team will kind of pop up here and there. But for the most part, it, it, it's the teams that make the NBA finals are teams that you pretty much assume there's a team of, you know, four or five teams or maybe even less than that, you know, three or four that every single playoff start, you go, okay, those teams are probably going to make the NBA finals where, you know, this, it would just be unfathomable for a team two games below 500 uh, to make a run. But hey, go, that, that's pretty cool. I, I, I kind of like, I like the idea that we know going in a little bit, like, hey, when it's all said and done, the NBA finals, you're the two best teams are going to face each other to, you know, presumably the two best teams. But I kind of like the idea that like occasionally these random teams come and make these miracle runs or whatever. But uh, yeah, Moses is, is tough to stop. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. So I think the team that may have been most affected by uh, realignment is the uh, is the Bucks, and uh, they started in the Eastern Division in their first two seasons, sixty nine and seventy. And their first year with uh, Kareem in the seventy, they had a four point two five SRS, fifty six wins, which both would have topped the Western uh, Division had they been there. Uh, the Lakers only had a one point seven six SRS, so they definitely would have been uh, favorites for making the finals if they'd switched uh, divisions with the Hawks, as we mentioned uh, before. Um, geographically, would have made sense. But given the expansion situation, you know, we understand why they did it the way they did. Um, still, of course, they they would probably would have lost to the Knicks in the finals since they lost to them in the Eastern Conference semifinals at the time. So, um, you know, it, that puts another finals on their resume, but obviously doesn't necessarily make the uh, a huge difference. And then uh, things get even uh, things get even a little bit wackier once they actually move to the Western Conference in uh, 71. Yes, yeah, so you, you had the Braves, the Cavs, and the Blazers. We mentioned that a little bit earlier, uh, and and you know, so they get added to the NBA. You start the conferences there. Uh, Western Conference, then, uh, or the Bucks move to the Western Conference, and obviously they win the finals that first year in the West. But uh, you really can make an argument that they would have been more uh, a more constant fixture uh, in the NBA Finals if they had stayed in the East. You know, it made geographic sense that they were in the West at that time. But yeah, you really look at, at the history and what we'll go over here in a sec. Where if they had stayed, at, you know, in the East, man, it looks like they have a little bit. More more in them where instead we get you know that one year and then some struggles that comes in Milwaukee but I'm uh, just kind of looking at it um Year by year, obviously, win the title the first year. Good, that works. Uh, 1972, they lose uh, in the Western Conference Finals to the Lakers. Uh, the Bucks had finished with 63 wins and a 10.7 uh, <laughs> SRS that year. Uh, Boston was great in the East. They had 56 wins, but uh, only a 4.38 SRS. Uh, the best team in the East, uh, the second best team in the East, rather, you obviously had Boston was number one. Second best team was the Knicks with 48 wins. So we're talking again, you know, the Bucks have 63 wins uh, in the West, really a dominant team. And, and the third best team in uh, the East was the third seeded Baltimore with only 38 wins so you look at that and you look yeah man i mean the, the absolute powerhouse of bucks good chance they make the finals that year as well um if they had been in the east uh 73 they have uh, better srs uh 7.84 uh then the 68 win celtics who were at 7.35 but they were upset in the playoffs the bucks in, in 73 uh, and then they do make the finals again in 1974 but you look at those two years there particularly 72 and 73 those look like teams that that had they had made you know two more runs in the finals or you know even if they don't win the titles 
presumable chance that they can make the NBA Finals uh, again. And again, that's really, you know, that adds another, you know, wrinkle to Kareem's resume. It adds another wrinkle to the Milwaukee resume and really makes that one of the teams in the 70s, you know, an early dominant team of the 70s, where instead they make two NBA Finals, they win one or whatever. But it doesn't, it, it doesn't quite have the same cachet as, you know, those four straight NBA Finals. And, and again, we're assuming a lot of things here, but, but it does look, you know, on paper like they had really good chances ahead. They had stayed in the East of making longer runs. In the finals, but again, you have no idea what's going to happen once the finals come and go, or, or you know, once the playoffs come. But yeah, you still look at those two years, and that would have really changed the trajectory of the entire franchise and changed the entire trajectory of really the early seventies, and maybe the trajectory of Kareem's career. Maybe he just stays in Milwaukee or whatever. You know, a lot of ifs and and whatnot. But yeah, it's pretty interesting to look at those two years and see what what, what could have been. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, it, it, you just have two of the same all time teams uh, at the same time in the Lakers and the uh, Bucks. Yeah, and if if one of them had been the, the conference, obviously that would have uh, uh, that that would have made things a little bit. Uh, I don't know if it's more interesting, but they definitely they may, might have changed things. Might have been beneficial to the yeah, Bucks, absolutely. Certainly. And and, but, and the Celtics yeah. get their little early run then in the early seventies that we talk about, which which obviously right. they were great teams. But you do wonder if you know with the two the Lakers and and the, and the Bucks were really your powerhouse teams, and you wonder if they had been sort of separated, that would have been the rivalry. And said you know the the Celtics get in there a little bit, and 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 yeah, it's kind of fun to to think about yeah. head, you know, the Bucks Stadies, but. All right, I mean, it really benefited the uh, the Knicks. I think the Knicks really sure. were the team oh, that, yeah, that yeah. probably was helped by that. If if the Buck if they had been battling the Bucks in the playoffs, I mean, obviously they beat them in seventy. But once you know Oscar comes and once you know the Bucks are really a powerhouse, you know if the, the Bucks Knicks battles would have been interesting. I think the Bucks would have been the, the favorites in most of those uh, situations as well. So yeah, the the Celtics d- came along and, and were strong, and they actually of course beat the Bucks in seventy four. So, um, but yeah, that that does shift uh, things a uh, a bit for sure, and definitely could have had them in the um, Eastern Conference. If that that would have made uh, a sense if you put the Rockets out west and kept them in the east. But but either way, because um, <laughs> then it worked the other the, way. Because then they got yeah, to the east, and then it sucked yeah, too. Then, <laughs> then they get moved to the Eastern Conference finally in the '81 season. And uh, yeah, they and that this did make sense geographically. But yeah, they basically get stuck behind Boston in Philadelphia every year. They they, they win 50 plus games, seven straight seasons in a row. But you know, each year they lose to Boston or uh, Philly. You know, uh, the the first year in '81 they actually won 60 games, but the uh, the, the Celtics and the uh, Sixers both won 62 games. So, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's, that's really uh, quite quite an intense uh, year. But, um, but they were, you know, the, their division, you know, they were in the Central Division. They had the Bulls, the Pacers, the Hawks, the Cavs, and the Pistons. Uh, the, the, the Hawks are a little bit out of their realm there, but every other team is right. You know, they're right by the lake there pretty much. So that's uh, – it's a geographic that, – that, that all, all that all makes total, total sense. No, and, and that's – yeah, that's kind of, it's, it's kind of a hard luck thing because it, it it's something where you can sort of say, ah, yeah, that, that they should be in the East. But it's like, man, if they would have been in the West, like, that would have been really awesome. Like, I would have yeah. definitely enjoyed some Bucks, you know, Celtics, you know, NBA Finals or whatever. And, and it would have – I mean, obviously, you have the Lakers out there, but um, so that that there's still a juggernaut out there uh, in, in the Western Conference. But again, like they are then in the upper echelon where they they had real trouble getting to that upper upper echelon in the East with with Boston Philly just being a complete powerhouse. And you do wonder if it had been Lakers Bucks, you know that that would have been really cool, you know Boston Philly in, in the East and the Lakers Milwaukee in the West. But you know it, it made total sense geographically, so it's hard to really get too right. upset about it. Yeah, I mean, but yeah, absolutely. I mean, the the Lakers you definitely had. The weaker conference in the um in the eighties and were able to yeah were able to ride through I and mean, there were some tough teams but sure. the East definitely had the had the tougher teams and that's um you know part of the reason why the Lakers were able to make so many finals in the uh, in the West because there were not they didn't have the same powerhouse in the West that the you know the the Sixers and Celtics were uh, dealing with every year. Uh, so uh, I want to do a little uh, a, a slight interlude about the uh, 77 merger because that, that's going to kind of inform the conversation that we have for the uh, for the next few teams. But um, so the merger, of course, happens before the 77 season. The uh, the Spurs and the Nets go to the Eastern Conference. Uh, the Pacers and the Nuggets go to the Western Conference. And uh, as we talked about before, the the Atlantic and Pacific divisions basically make make sense. In the Atlantic, you have Philly, New York, Boston. Boston, Buffalo, and the New Jersey Nets. Pacific, you have uh, Portland, Phoenix, Seattle, the Lakers, and Golden State. Um, the Midwest Conference in the Western Division is, is pretty okay. You have uh, Detroit, Chicago, Kansas City, Indianapolis, and Milwaukee. Then, then you, you got Denver. That It's a little bit weird that they're in the Midwest. I, I would think they would geographically be closer to the Pacific, but it, it, it's kind of basically tossed up. It, it, it's pretty close either way, and Denver doesn't have like a perfect fit. So so that I think that one basically makes sense. And then it's the, the Central is the one that's a little bit wacky. You've got <laughs> Houston, San Antonio, New Orleans, Atlanta, Cleveland, and Washington, and that yeah. that one is just uh, you know, 
Yeah, Washington, San Antonio. Eh. Yeah, I mean, you got basically you got three Southern teams, and right. then three, you know, yeah, um, Atlanta. I guess is actually closer to Cleveland and Washington than it is New Orleans. Uh, Cleveland, uh, Atlanta's kind of an island there, but um, anyway, what can you do? But um, and then seventy eight, they uh, it basically makes the same, remains the same. They uh, come, and then in uh, and, and then it's the next season where things uh, change with the uh, Clippers being added to the uh, league. Um, they were the Buffalo Braves from. 71 to 78 in the Eastern Conference and then moved to the Western Conference in 79, becoming the Clippers. They actually traded leagues with the Pistons, who went to the uh, uh, Pacific Division, um, or the Clippers, rather, went to the Pacific Division. Uh, the Bullets went to the Atlantic, and the Pistons went to the uh, Central, which basically uh, helped everyone else out and made a uh, sense of things just a little bit more. Yeah, the, the Bullets really, I mean, when we talk about that, the realignment, I mean, that that really helps things a lot, them going to the Atlantic. It just makes so much more sense versus them being in the Central. And and again, like, you can sort of make a case for them in a, in a Central, but geographically it just made no sense with Houston, San Antonio, New Orleans there as well. So, yeah, that, that, that really was a benefit, moving the Pistons to the Central. That seems to kind of fit for them, and the Bolts going Atlantic. That that seems to all kind of come together. So it's it's nice to see it in some way. The the OCD and in, in, in all of us is kind of like okay, that that's good. I, that's that's yeah. better. That's better. Yeah, so better. yeah. but yeah. Uh, yeah, things would uh, not always be the most stable. It'd be a few more years before it got completely stable. But that's all right. Right. Yeah. So the next season, the. Um the 80 season or before the 80 season there's a there's another uh, switch the the jazz were in in new orleans and they were in the eastern conference from 75 to 80 they moved to utah and they swapped places with the uh, pacers so um so now the pacers are in the eastern conference and the jazz are in the western conference which you know is is which makes sense you know certainly um sure. is getting closer to what we are used to and uh and typically although neither team was good enough for a while where that necessarily made much of a uh competitive Competitive difference. No, and and yeah, by like year three, Utah was in the playoffs, and then they they'd make twenty straight appearances in the playoffs. You know, two straight NBA Finals appearances. But yeah, it wasn't like that necessarily right away was, was a huge deal. And I think it did help them, you know, continue the run. But it's not like you know, I think I feel like even if they were in the East, the the Utah Jazz, as we know it, would have would have probably made that. I don't know if they're going to contend for for you know a, a title at any point during the eighties or whatever. But they probably make the playoffs in the in the East as well. They were a good enough team to to make it either way. But yeah, of course, being in the Western Conference helped sort of helped them a little bit to make those twenty straight. appearances appearances uh in the uh the playoffs and as far as the pacers uh they would make the playoffs their first year in the east but then they would have to wait another six to return to the playoffs uh, and then it wasn't until 10 years uh into the east that they became kind of a regular playoff team so it really i don't think it would have mattered for them one way or another they were just kind of not a great team for, for quite a while uh but uh yeah it's, it's, it was kind of interesting there but i i think one way or another the jazz probably do can, you know start up their 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 you know miraculous playoff run even if they're in the east but yeah it's it's uh it, it certainly helped to make the west because i mean there's a few years that we talk about where it sort of gets lost to, to time as well that they were a real contender in the west and, and it had a chance to maybe you know up, upset the, the lakers or you know maybe make a run of the finals but again the lakers were such a great team at that point that it was almost like nah this is this is good you know they're going to represent the west for, for quite a few years but uh yeah it's kind of interesting to think of what utah could have done maybe in the east but be geographically it makes all the sense in the world for them to, to be in the right. west so yeah um yeah, and the interesting thing about the the late seventies after the merger from seventy seven, I think through the eighty season, or um, there was basically um, it was a almost a completely balanced schedule. Every team played each other uh, for times I believe so uh, it didn't matter which uh, you know conference or division or anything that you were in you were playing each team uh, you know that number of uh, that number of times so um, so yeah I, I guess none of this alignment really even mattered uh, that much uh, during that time because you were it, it almost made no difference in terms of schedule I think you play there were a couple teams you played three times but everybody else you played four times and it was kind of it was almost at random at that point so um, uh, so yeah I guess uh, I, I guess in terms of this it didn't really significantly matter and it wasn't until 81 that they went back to you know you play the teams in the other conference twice and then you play teams in your division and or conference you know a certain number of times so funny how that worked yeah absolutely um so the uh the pacers it, we talked about them with the jazz but yeah they were in the western conference from 77 through 79 and then the eastern conference from uh 1980 through the uh present and then the uh the spurs were in a uh similar boat I, I i guess opposite boat they were um in the eastern conference from 77 through 80 and then moved to the western conference as we mentioned earlier um uh setting up the modern realignment we'll, we'll recap that in just a second but uh yeah i mean the the spurs are interesting because they definitely could have made the finals if they'd been 
been in the West in 78 and 79. They had a better SRS than the uh, Sonics of both seasons. In fact, they led the league in SRS mm-hmm. in 79. Uh, took the Bullets two seven games in the Eastern Conference Finals in 79. So they definitely you know, had a shot at um, – you know, would have might have changed the trajectory of their franchise uh, post, um, you know, ABA had they uh, been in the Western Conference during that times, making a finals or maybe even winning a, a, a championship there also might have kind of shifted the thinking a little bit on the ABA post, um, uh, you know, post merger, because obviously the ABA guys were successful individually, but none of those teams were, you know, really particularly, I mean, I mean they were good. I mean, Denver was a really good team. The uh, Spurs were a really good team, but, you know, they didn't make a, make a finals or, you know, they, they were still ended up falling short of the NBA teams really, um, you know, during that time, obviously there were only four of them. So, and, and two of them were just not, you know, particularly competitive. So um, that might've, uh, you know, that, 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 that would have been interesting. Yeah. Thing no, that, that is happened, cool to but, think about yeah. if, if they make right. an NBA finals or even win a title. It's like, oh, well, shit, this this was a pretty good league. Like, these guys were pretty good. So, yeah, whereas, again, like, you, you just hear, well, these George Gervin, you know, you hear the individual names. Like you're saying, the narratives are sort of, well, you, there was these really good players, but, you know, when, when they came to the NBA, it took a little while for them to form. So, no, I like that idea. It would have been really cool to see them, you know, and, and it really would have... I, I, you know, obviously not alive at the time, but I would have been fun to watch, you know, just see like, well, the, then it really felt like a, a, a true ABA versus NBA sort of NBA finals, which would have been really fun as well. But, you know, alas, it didn't happen. So, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, so they moved to the West in 81 as, as part of that realignment. And, j- and just to recap, because I, I before this, I didn't I kind of thought it all happened in one season, but it actually kind of happened over three seasons. In 79, we had the Braves Pistons swap mm-hmm. in 80. We had the Jazz Pacers swap. And then in 81, the Mavericks come. And that at that point, as we mentioned, the Bulls and Bucks go to the East and the Spurs and Rockets go to the West. So there was kind of a, a three year process of finally getting the you know leagues to kind of take shape the way that it was. It wasn't didn't quite happen all at once but it, you know, they, they kind of got there slowly as uh, you know teams uh, uh, change cities <laughs> that which of course uh, obviously um, accelerated that process uh, certainly yeah yeah so now we get to more of the uh, we, we, we get to more of the modern um, things and these these are easier so um, we'll, we'll, we'll tackle them as a whole because they're all sort of a, one different thing so oh this one act- I, this one uh, sorry to not not to interrupt but this is one I did not sure. ever know about until we started doing yeah. research for this like I, I I don't know why I just never noticed it but yeah this has been a really interesting thing here so I think uh, I think yeah, a lot I, of people I, will be surprised by yeah. this as well. I didn't realize all the teams had had infected all of them. I, I just I knew a couple of them had started off in a different conference and but never really investigated why. But anyway, uh, the Miami Heat they actually began play their first year in the Western Conference in '89 and have been in the East since 1990. Um, the Hornets, Bobcats, Hornets uh, franchise, um, which is not at all confusing, uh, began. <laughs> By the way, oh Jason, you know how you know I, I I mentioned it to my wife one time and she agrees uh-huh. it's confusing. So there you go. So you know okay, how people are right. like it's not that bad. I I tried to yeah. explain it to her and obviously not you know. <laughs> I, I wanted because it you know she doesn't deal with this stuff all the time or whatever. So I was yeah. like, all right, tell me if this makes sense to you. She's like, no, it makes no sense at all. I was like, thank you. All yeah. right, yeah. I was like, you're so right. whose history is this? And she's like, I don't know. And I was like, thank yeah. you. All right, there like, you go. Who, who does Baron Davis belong to? That's exactly. Yeah, where does Baron yeah. go? <laughs> I mentioned yeah. that. Was like, oh, all right, that's all. That's all I want to know. Yeah, <laughs> where do I so, align Baron Davis? Yeah. Right. Exactly. So. um Yes, the the Hornets, original Hornets, began playing the Eastern Conference in 89 and then moved to the Western Conference for a season in 1990 and then have been in the Eastern Conference uh, since 1991. We're not counting the 2003-2004 <laughs> seasons when they uh, did not officially exist. Where did they um, go? Where's David yeah, Wesley? I, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Where, where it's It's... It's a uh, baffling. So, and the Magic, um, their first season, nineteen ninety, they were in the East, and then nineteen ninety one, they went to the Western Conference and have been in the Eastern Conference in uh, since nineteen ninety two. So, why did each of those teams spend a year in the Western Conference? Well, the uh, when they decided to um, add four teams to the NBA, this would have been around eighty seven. The uh, they decided to adopt a rotating system be- because they wanted – they felt like it complicated division alignments. I-, I guess it was mostly, again, because they wanted to avoid having three expansion teams in one conference for competitive, maybe even financial reasons. So they spread the burden out even though they didn't make much uh, geographic sense. And you know, it, this is from an AP story from uh, April of 87, which uh, Roomba on Twitter tipped us off on uh, from the um, – in the LA Times archive. Um, and and – I guess you, part of the issue was because they initially wanted to they, – there were 23 teams in the NBA, so they wanted to add three expansion teams to have 26. But then Orlando and Miami, they couldn't really choose bef- between them, so they decided, oh, why not both? So <laughs> right, they yeah, – uh, We're doing well so as a league, 20, so let's do both. <laughs> right. 
and um, they kept the uh, they kept the Timberwolves uh, out west, uh, you know, because they they didn't get affected by this. I guess it was more, it was more of an issue of the teams being you know leaning toward the east, so they needed to get you know teams out in the west. So um, yeah, it was weird. It didn't like I said all those teams were bad during those times, so it didn't necessarily have like huge effect on things. I guess I uh, I guess the, the league the size that it is, I feel like maybe it's. Um, you know, not as big of a deal, but I guess you know the it was you were playing your conference, you were playing each individual team more times than you do today in a 32, 30 team league. So I guess it matters a little bit more than it than it would today because again, your your things are a little bit thinner than they are today. So I I guess I didn't really necessarily hurt anybody. I, I guess the players who were taking those you know really incredibly long um, trips, you know, if you're in Miami and Orlando, you're going out, you know, doing your most of your trips out west. Maybe that's not so fun, but other than that, I guess not really a big deal in the scheme of things. Uh, yeah, no, it, it, yeah, I, I think the big part is that they weren't any good. So it's not like it really affected anything in terms of, right. of, okay, well, this team got, and, and, and the, what was to their credit and, and probably played a little bit too is they balanced it a little bit where it's like you didn't have, you know, all the expansion, you, you didn't have the West had three expansion teams or two. You know, there was a way where they sort of smartly, I guess, in, in a sense, it's kind of confusing when, when you sort of read it the way we did, but smartly it makes sense. Hey, these teams are not going to be any good. They're going to be pretty terrible for a few years. So we'll just kind of stick them in, in, in the bottom of, of this conference for a year. And then when another team comes in, they'll go to that bottom and then we'll switch this. So it did make a lot of sense what they were doing. But, yeah, it doesn't really affect any playoff runs or anything like that because the teams are just bad and, and they were going to be bad in either conference, you know, regardless of which, you know, who they were with or whatever. So it is interesting in that sense where um, – and we talked about it a lot a while ago where the Bucks are kind of that rare case where within, you know, two years, they're an ultra competitive, you know, title winning team or whatever. Whereas this sort of fits what we the modern expansion team idea where it's like you're going to be bad for, for like three or four years until, you you know, you're competitive a little bit. But uh, yeah, I mean, it didn't take a ton of time for these teams to get super competitive. Uh, but for these first few years, there was you know really no chance that they were going to be in the mix for, for anything. So so it made sense what they did and, and it didn't really affect play or, or, or competition or really affect any title runs or, or playoff runs that much, you know, in terms of what, what conference they were in or whatnot. So Right, yeah. And I, I believe the Orlando and the West predated Shaq. So they you know, Right, they were, exactly. Right, yeah. So um that was really when they became competitive and eventually yeah miami and charlotte got pretty good in the next couple of years took a little bit longer for the uh, timberwolves but um yeah and also i learned from this that one of the original owners of the timberwolves was uh marv wolfenson so um i don't know if that has <laughs> if, if there's any link to uh the fact that they called themselves timberwolves but kind of like uh like bob johnson and the bobcats yeah you know? which but, by the way um, i never knew that until like a few years ago and i was like man that, that's pretty sweet but uh yeah, yeah and i love too there's this like out of context quote where he just says all the pro teams in minnesota are called minnesota so i don't know what like yeah, so he was like people were wondering why i didn't call it minneapolis or I, I don't know he just got very defensive about that mr wolfenstein yeah, <laughs> or wolfenstein yes. i don't know well, like, it's all right buddy minnesota. chill out like yeah. all right like, it's, it's all right we're just curious I why it's minnesota. Your state pride not yeah, minneapolis you know? but that's hey, whatever yeah um, yes, and then finally we get to the uh, the New Orleans uh, version of the Hornets, and now of course Pelicans. Um, they technically joined the Eastern Conference in uh, two thousand three, uh, two thousand and four, um, or I, I, I guess you know already existed within the Eastern Conference, and then they moved to uh, the Western Conference in two thousand and five once the uh, Bobcats uh, joined the league and took the Hornets' history uh, with them, the Charlotte version of the history with them. Again, it's not confusing at all. Um, and then, yeah, 2005, 2007, they, they shared with OKC, but that didn't change them geographically. That just led paved the way for the Thunder eventually to move from uh, Seattle, I guess. Um, and, uh, yeah, playoff-wise, the, the minor effect, I guess, on things, but not necessarily with the the, the, the uh, peak Chris Paul years, but but outside of that, has not they've not really been competitive enough to make a major uh, difference on whether if they'd been in the Eastern Conference versus the Western Conference. I guess – uh, given the the lean years of the East in you know recent years, the, the East you know having some teams that you know not finishing five hundred did not make the playoffs. I guess they could have been more competitive if they'd been stuck in the Eastern Conference. But um, you know, outside of that, not really much um, of a you know not really necessarily much of a of a change there. No, it, it, it does kind of yeah, and and I'm not sure that I'm not sure it really changes a whole lot there. Um, in terms of, you know, competitiveness, you know, you have Paul in the peak Paul years, uh, they made the, you know, playoffs three times in the West and including Western semifinals. Um, so 
they were competitive still in the West. I mean, obviously the West was was, was dominant for most of the time uh, as well in a really good league, whereas the East sort of lagged. So maybe you can make the argument that if they're in the East, they maybe make you know a conference finals run or whatever. But they they did really well in the West uh, for a few years there with with, with, uh, with you know Pete Paul and and you know Tyson Chandler at the, the peak of his powers and you know some David West stuff as well. But they've really suffered in the West since then. So you do look at it now and you wonder that hey, if they were in the East during some of these Anthony Davis years. They could possibly make a few longer runs, but they've not really been that great of a team. And there's been chances for them to make the playoffs in the West. They made a you know an appearance, uh, one one appearance in in you know the Davis's run uh, in 2014, 2015, where they had a very good team. But but since then, have just not been a great team. And I, I don't know that that's necessarily them being in the West or them just not being a very good team. So I don't know. I mean, I guess they probably would make the playoffs a few more times in the East. But I don't know that we're looking at a team that's you know knocking on the door. Of a conference finals, had they be in the, you know, if they were in the East versus what they are in the West right now, they're just not a very good team and they just have not been a very good team for quite a few years as well. So I, I don't know. It, it, you know, yeah, they probably do make a few more playoffs and maybe Anthony Davis, the narrative around him is a little bit of like, you know, a guy who can, you know, get his team to the fifth seed or whatever, but not much beyond that. But I, I don't know that it's really like, yeah, again, I don't know if they're knocking on the door of, of, you know, being the East's best team or even making conference finals or even making the conference semifinals, uh, anytime in the last, you know, five ten years or whatever so uh, yeah i i I don't know if it really changes their trajectory all that much yeah uh, yeah uh, other than maybe that one year with chris paul where they were really strong and they you know they took the spurs seven games and all that 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 might have been the one that would have made a difference but outside of that um you know not not, not, even though anthony davis has been really good yeah he hasn't had much of a team around him Uh, maybe that's going to change a little bit this year they they look all right this year but uh but yeah so uh, not not a big change so yeah i i mean i i think the you know, when you look at realignment history, it's more of a it's more of an interesting rather than having like a major effect on competitive success. I think you know the Bucks and you know the stuff we talked about with the um, the Royals in the sixties. Those those are really the major and, and the Spurs a little bit in the late seventies. I think those are like maybe like the three instances where you could have seen like a major shift in you know what happened in the NBA in terms of who was champion or who made the finals. You know, based on that. Um, other than that, yeah, that has it's been more like it, it's more interesting trivia than it is actually like a major effect on you know what could have happened in history yeah for sure yeah but it's fun show nonetheless i i like yeah um, no <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah we, we learned a lot of you know of stuff i didn't really realize or hadn't thought much about yeah. um, and, well it's just kind of fun to, to to look at in general just like the you know we know that that time and it's one of our favorite periods to talk about is that like you know the 60s and 70s yeah. or whatever we're just so much stuff the league is trying to figure out itself or whatever but yeah there's a lot of stuff that i didn't really necessarily remember of like oh yeah that team was in the west or oh, that team was in the east or or why things changed or you know teams moving and why they didn't move or whatever so and, and it's just fun to kind of see the league sort of forming itself and try to figure out, okay, what the hell are we going to do here? And we've seen, I mean, really since 1981, which makes a lot of sense that that's really when the league in a lot of ways started stabilizing and, and becoming, you know, the global entity it is, is when, you know, the they, they figured out, okay, here's where the teams are, here's where they're going to be. And and it sort of speaks a little bit to the league's, you know, madness for for all those years when all these teams are moving around and changing and the conferences or whatever. So I, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a good representation of the league as a whole, looking at these realignments and looking at, you, you know, the stabilization that happened in the early 80s and, and how it sort of held for ever since then right yeah i think we take for granted it's easy to take for granted that um uh, you know that, that things were not like this because you know we're just kind of so used to things being the, the way that they are it, it's just weird always sometimes when you go back in the 70s and you look at like you know um houston being in the eastern conference finals or you know things like that it's like oh yeah that that, that was completely different and how it got there and the um because the changes were so you know, it wasn't just one or two teams that changed it. They happened. It was all encompassing throughout the entire league. It's sort of hard to wrap your mind around, you know, the shape of the league then because it was uh, different in you know major and subtle ways. It, 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 I, to doing something like this is nice to break it down into um, you know, kind of an organized where you where you can kind of. It's easier, at least for me, to wrap my mind around. Hopefully for the listeners as well to kind of get a sense of you know the historical shifts and changes and and how things kind of uh, came about. Hopefully we successfully conveyed that to them hopefully yeah. people uh enjoy that and uh if you have been enjoying the show um please uh leave a rating and review we're on um itunes we're on stitcher we're on tune in we're on you know basically google play basically any uh of the uh services that you want to listen to we are available to you we would love for uh, you to uh to give us a little shout out uh, on there especially on itunes we appreciate that um we are uh, you can find us at the step back at fansided.com and there's a lot of great content going on there other good podcasts and other uh, lots of good writing on what's going on in the nba season as it currently is happening and um 
uh, also on Facebook and Twitter at Over and Back NBA. So I'm an old person who says at before uh, that. So <laughs> uh, so um, so you can do that. You you know what I mean. And uh, yeah, we'd love to have you there. Uh, shout us out. Let, let us know if there's anything on the episode that you thought was interesting or any questions or or what have you. I always appreciate that. So uh, did I forget anything, Rich? Uh, no, I think you got it. And yeah, if there is any service that you listen to podcasts on and we're not on there, just let us know uh, at Over and Back NBA, and then we will uh, we'll look it up and make sure that we can get on that service. But I think we should be just about everywhere you do get shows but hey if you if, if i use xf and you guys aren't on there let us know and we'll, we'll do what we can to get on it absolutely so uh thanks everyone for listening we'll back again soon